vuorovaikutteinen, ei pelkästään, että täällä vaan miehet ja naiset lätisee täällä sohvilla ja te kuuntelette vaan, että ihmiset kyselee toisiltaan. Tervetuloa! Jees, annetaan aplodit Johannalle. Johanna Hyvä. laittaa aina hyvät kahvit ja kaikki purtavat meille Hyvä. täällä ja yes. tuottaa tapahtumia. Aplodit Johannalle. Hyvä. Yes. So guests come here. We have a guest from Sweden slash Serbia. Hello. Bobo, Bocan. Is it Bocan? Bogdan, Bogdan. So we will keep the language in English. Do you understand my English at all? Maybe a little bit, yes. Okay, welcome here. Uh, we thought that we introduce ourselves first before we start start making the world a better place. And a sentence and a sentence. So my name is Ossi Valpio. Some people know me uh, as a rapper or a teacher or event organizer. And uh, I've been rapping since I was 16, so it's from 99. So I can say that I've been rapping in the 90s, that is the thing. And, and uh, I come from the group called Urbani Legenda, and my MC name then was Aika Pommi. And we were 16 when we started, and uh, the scene in Yugoslavia was really, really small then. So we are basically the, one of the first ones in, in Yugoslavia. So I've seen in 17 years the growth from basically not that much people doing things in the community and in hip hop hip hop world to this day when there's like tens of people rapping and producing songs and doing things. And the main thing that we're building on here tonight is is the topic of hip hop as an educator and a building block for and a tool for, for educating people in communities and getting people together and glue glue these things together. So I say uh, welcome to everybody who are town of Yvaskola whenever you want to come. And here is Ramona. No nyt kuuluu vähän Kyllä. Yes, so hello, my name is Ramona and uh, I'm a B-girl and actually I started with hip hop. Uh, I'm from a city called Tampere, from Finland. I also been living in Sweden a few years, uh, a few years ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I've seen like basically, I'm like much younger than Ossi, so I've seen like uh, the hip hop from a lot different point of view because I came into that world when when there is already like MTV music videos and all these things going going on strongly, and there is all, already like people seen strong people seen in Finland and all these things, but. Um, it's like I'm straight after the next generation from the, let's say, like OGs from Finland because the scene is very young here. So, so I've seen, like, I've heard what they, where they started, and then I've seen the growth when from when I started in Finland. And uh, hmm, from the city where I started, there wasn't much of a hip hop. Uh, it's it was mainly aerob aerobics <laughs> that they called hip hop. And then later I met other dancers from Helsinki and I, I got involved with the breaking and yes, from there I started basically. Yeah. Yes, yes. Very great, very great. So, uh, my name is Elias. Uh, most of you know me as Elmo. I've been dancing for the past 15 years now. I started when I was eight, so that means that I'm 23 at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Logic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I've been kind of, well, I kind of, I guess I grew up among hip hop since I've been breaking 
uh, more than half of my life. And so getting into breaking scene means that you kind of get into hip hop scene at, at the same time too. So, but uh, yeah, I'm a lot, lot younger than Ossie, but uh, I've also seen for a while uh, uh, this hip hop scene and this kind of stuff. I mostly do breaking, not that much other stuff. Today I'm gonna do some DJing too, but uh, yeah. I don't really know what to say about myself besides that. I'm from here and I see a lot of familiar faces. Hey. Hello, my name is Bogdan. Most of the people call me Bobo. Uh, and I'm a b-boy, originally. I started dancing when I was 17. 16, 17, so kind of half of my life. I'm 33 now. And uh, I represent Above the Clouds crew from Stockholm, Malmö, and uh, also recognized crew from Serbia and around uh, Europe. Uh, and yeah, I, I kind of got into hip hop in Sweden at this point. Was, uh, it was like a break of the culture, the jams, up till 2001 was mostly like all elements. You could see graffiti writers, MCs, DJs, and dancers. Uh, and the vibe, like the community vibe of hip hop. But then after 2001, uh, it got more into like uh, the elements divided. So now you have competitions and uh, stuff like that. And like it's rarely any B boys on rap concerts and stuff like that. Uh, which is a bit sad, so this is what we're trying to do in Sweden, like to combine, to bring back the community to hip-hop. Because, uh, yeah, it's a better vibe when it's uh, different, different art, art expressions. So, yeah, uh, I've been working with different organizations, different crews, different theaters, like, and uh, my aspect of hip-hop has always been to bring back the community and to get the youth uh, to either make jams or to travel to jams because that's, I think that's the essence of, of this what we do, to meet new people with your art form. It, uh, it breaks down many boundaries. So yeah, that's a bit about me and what I do. <laughs> yeah, the, the main subject was to talk about communities and how we, how we uh, you, you were talking about that you travel a lot and make people go to champs and travel. So one thing that combines you three is that you've been traveling a lot. Elmo, you've been studying in uh, in Åsa, near Stockholm. Ramona has been there too. So uh, uh, and you've been there too. I've been <laughs> I've been visiting there. Hey, hi to Matti Watti. I know you narcomaniac of hip hop. You're watching everything related to hip hop. Say hi to Matti Watti. Hey Matti Watti. So, uh, what are your experiences in hip hop communities in different countries? That what are the similarities if you come to Finland or you go to Sweden or Slovenia and, and all around the Europe? What what is what are the similar things you see in each places? The similar thing is the the art form, like uh, the way to make a jam. Is the jams are are similar, but the ways to make the jams is different because of the different different uh, state of the country like when you go to Serbia for instance it's uh, really hard to get money for for throwing a jam so it's more commercial stuff like they need to go to sponsors like, well while here in Scandinavia we have more cultural like the the city helps or the the country helps uh, so the result the results are similar but the way to the result is, is a bit different. Uh, also another similarity is like uh, the ice breaking point. Like for instance, I dance, somebody else dance, and uh, that's the icebreaker. You can directly start talking to strangers about stuff uh, for maybe half an hour, and then you start talking about regular life, which comes to the point where, ah, okay, so this is how you do in your culture. This is the traditional of this country or these people. We have different stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think the, the most similar is that 
the icebreaker and the, the gems. Yeah, the mutual interest of, of language called hip hop. We, we met just yesterday, and, and uh, what we talked like five hours straight about hip hop in, in Balkan area and in Sweden and in Finland. So it's like instant icebreaker. That's nice. Uh, Elmo, what are your uh, experiences and similarities and differences in, in different countries when it comes to hip hop? Well, I, I agree completely with what Bob, Bogdan says that that, uh, that that the goal is very similar within uh, all b boys throwing jams wherever they are. The, the difference is the different hustle you have to do to make a jam in your in your country. Like like um, we met with Bobo in jams in Sweden, in uh, Slovenia, in Croatia, and uh, everywhere the the vibe is is the same. But of course, it's different. They, it's, uh, you know, South of Europe, and we are from Scandinavia, so, yeah, but I think that it's, uh, the people are pretty, they have the same mindset, and uh, it's really easy to approach them and make new friends, and, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I can just only re repeat the words he said, basically. Any new, Ramona? Something, something new? Well, seen or experienced? Um, hmm. Well, yes, I can relate to everything that Popo and uh, Elmo said. That, of course, like everybody has the same understanding because we are doing things around the same subject, which is uh, hip hop, and that's something that united like all of us. Uh, and then, of course, like uh, if we talk about only dancing, then it's a one thing. But then, if we talk about all the elements. So then within like under name hip hop there is many different cultures like DJing culture is totally different than the dancers. Dancers want to be healthy, D DJs can get like, they don't have to think about these things they can play. So of course this kind of like uh, differences there is always like within your own country or, or abroad. That's like one, one thing. Uh, another thing is that uh, what kind of a country you come from it's usually shows in your dancing as well that that we in Finland we come from a pretty good good like comfort zone we have good houses and good standard of living and then people from from more poor countries they you see a lot of rawness in their in their way of of living the hip hop culture because that comes from their own cultural background and the, like not even the culture, but the, just the living conditions where they come from. So these kind of uh, differences you can see when the people meet, that the, the approach to the same thing can be a lot uh, different. Yeah. Yes, hip hop has grown out from South Bronx to every freaking place in Earth, and someday out of this Earth, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So uh, what makes you stay on your roots. I know you all, so you want to keep the roots in your hip-hop, the way you, you express yourselves. How do you see the world where, where like people have gone from making it just for fun and, and to have something to do and to express yourself to the point where people make a lot of money or, or compete a lot and, and change their mindset to, to the thing that they want to be best at the craft, what are your are exp experiences in in the field of hip hop in this? Could you <laughs> repeat the question? <laughs> no, no, but you mean that uh, <laughs> what? Yes, you, I, I know you all that you started from the roots and you you and you uh, make things from that point of view to make 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 like. Uh, uh, how do I say this? Mm, yeah, hip hop has come from the, the point of view where you started to make like jams and, and parties, and you do that all the time. I know that we've been doing it here. What, uh, but you've been competing a lot, and, and hip hop has come to the point where people are making a lot of money and, and living out of it. What are your expressions and views on that? Well, uh, to say, I don't think anyone is making a lot of money out of breaking, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I think uh, there are a few b-boys in the world who can do that and it's, it's great. Uh, for me personally, I, 
I uh, actually I kind of tried to do it, like uh, to be the best I can, and or of course I tried to be the best I can, but but to live out of competing and uh, de teaching and uh, focusing a lot on my dancing, and uh, yeah, it was fun for three months, and then it got boring because I was really interested in how can I be better at this, and then I would go have a beer with someone who don't really care about my breaking and he would be like why do you care and I would be like yeah true it's not so serious uh, I think uh, for me in breaking it's much different from rap when it comes to this that uh, you can kind of yeah hmm. well uh, if if we look at the wider picture like that uh, now uh, you were talking about a lot your like personal exactly this like feeling how you feel about it but if we like see the whole like industrial uh, the exactly the business and and the roots uh, so so I think now we got into that point that like okay first of all a few days ago breaking was accepted part of the Olympics youth Olympics so I think that's a pretty big proof that where we gone with this whole culture that that uh, we started from something that from the like the whole whole culture started from having nothing and you just created something because you didn't have anything and you had the need to to be part of something and do something good for yourself and for your surroundings and and uh, like this we came from that culture and then now we went to all the way to the to the point where they accepted us being part of the Olympics, so I think it just tells a lot that how good we are with this, that how like these people that uh, want to make business out of it, they saw the opportunity that actually it's possible with hip hop because it's something big and it's something that work like uh, how would I say. Like it came so popular that they finally saw that okay now it's ready for that that now we can start making business out of it. But before we saw it already with the music, what happened with the music, like video music in industry, like they kind of like used something we created when we didn't have anything and somebody took it and started making money out of it. But the people that actually needed hip hop, they still didn't get money out of it. So I think that's the point where we are now that that it's gonna be a really big money-making business if it goes to, for example, Olympics, that there is somebody that's going to get the money, but actually the people that we try to lift up with this culture are not going to see that money, and they, they will be just the puppets for that business. So I think that's uh, like something where we are now, that we are in the point that there is already people making money out of it, and then people only living for the culture. And uh, I think it's both, both of them are good in, in that we need people to see what we're doing and it needs the big competitions and all these things but we can't lose the essence of the whole culture but can I can I yeah. an extra question if when we come from the point of view we're making art like dance rapping and stuff when it comes to be a competition where people start seeing it as a sport do you see that as a uh, a little cross step when people only see the like the top of the game, like Red Bull BC One and Olympics, or MC competition and stuff like that. When the competition is not education, educating people that it, it's something else as as a sport too. Do you see that as a problem? Mm, well, I see. I see exactly the like two sides of it. That there, the good thing is that wow, we made it something big and something that that we went so far with this that they accepted it and and there is chance for people that they if they really want to go to Olympics, it's a chance for them. They can maybe get some money out of it as a dancers. But I also see that it's not taking forward uh, exactly the essence of the culture because the people will only see the tricks and like this, so it will be, come like a sport. And I see that now the whole scene will be divided in two. The people that follows the book of the rules of the Olympics uh, and then people that lives the culture and I think it will be more clear from now on that people will go either this way or this way. Bubble.
a complex question. Yes, it is. It's. Uh, yeah, I don't see. I don't see any problem with people making money of art or sport or whatever. Uh, but what I see, the problem is when you, when you let this go before your expression. So if you just want to express to get the money, that's one problem. The other problem is how do you spend your money? Uh, it's like, I don't mind, for instance, take, uh, I don't know, Cool Herc. Cool Herc, who is, if you don't know, is the first DJ of hip hop, the father of hip hop. Like, I wouldn't mind him to have like $3 million every month if he could spend it on making more parties, for instance. So I don't see like mo money within hip hop, I don't see it as a problem. But more, more this like, that you do whatever it takes to make money, uh, which has uh, like, uh, if we take different crews within hip hop, not just breaking crews, but different type of crews has crashed a lot because people have, they get a little bit of money and then they want more money and then it uh, infects the whole scene with people starting arguing with each other about money and and that that's when like yeah my the the most important thing with, within this culture for me is the having fun part and i think this part if it gets too serious this part won't longer exist like for instance now in the olympics i don't think they're gonna have so much fun uh, in the end like probably they're gonna have fun during the practice or like, uh, yeah, I'm going to the Olympics, I'm going to the Olympics. But then, like as I see in many other competitions, because there's just one winner, all the losers go like, oh yeah, I lost, you know, oh, it's so boring here. Oh. This, is, this is the problem, I think. Like, it's uh, more the, yeah, the state of mind of the artist or the sports, uh, the sport guy. It doesn't matter if it's sports or art, but the state of mind, like, are you doing it for the community, to have fun, to meet new people, uh, and you can make money of it, or is your aim to be the best and to make money? Because if your aim is to be the best and make the money, you don't gonna, you're not going to care about having fun. And by this, I don't think you're going to uh, care about building the community or, uh, or feeling good about yourself if you don't succeed. Because Within hip hop, like if you go to a jam, if you go to a jam, for me that's a success. Like you don't have to have more success than enter to the jam. That's the success of the night. Uh, but when you have competitions, the success is different. Then you need to make it to the grade eight or to the finals, or you have to win. So yeah, I don't know if this was really an answer to <laughs> the question, but I don't know if I had any question in it. But it was uh, Just yeah. speculating, speculating. Yeah. So let's get back to the hip hop as an educator. Uh, everybody in hip hop world knows this saying God, each one teach one and it's like built in system in hip hop communities that everybody respects everybody and, and shares their values and shares their teachings. So how has hip hop taught you doing your your uh, uh, path as a break dancer? Uh, oof, in many ways. Uh, first of all, hip hop gave me the thing to never give up, uh, to never give up, and most of all to, like when I was starting, coming up, it was about being yourself and to have your own style. So, uh, like whatever I do in life, I can take what I learned in hip hop and just flip it to everyday life. Like, okay, do things your own way, to find your own way, uh, take help from the like this, each one teach one. Okay, take take help from the originators. If they're still alive, go learn from the people who know better. Always get into ciphers, even if it's a, uh, for instance, like you can have ciphers in every kind of way. Like having a Christmas dinner with your family is a kind of a cipher, <laughs> you know. So like. Uh, to always uh, stay, uh, keep the cipher alive, for instance, like never let the cipher die, no matter if it's whatever you do in, your, in, li in life, this is what I have in, in my back mind, okay, don't let this cipher die. Uh, or if it dies, create a new one, like as fast as possible. Uh, so yeah, most of all, not to give up, to do my own thing, and to, uh, 
yeah, step out of the com comfort zone because stepping into a cipher for me for the first time was really, I was scared. <laughs> like I was a child that was like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then I did it and it was the best thing that happened to me. How old were you? Uh, 16, 16, uh, yeah. 16 was my first cipher. And there I learned like, okay, if I step out of my comfort zone, some really crazy things can happen. Because I lost the fear of getting into a cipher. From that point on, it was just straight love. Now I love to go in ciphers and I really don't care if I choke or I mess up a move or whatever I do. Uh, so I think this is the greatest lesson that I had from, from hip hop. For me personally, I've uh, well, I've had some. Uh, well, when I was uh, a kid, I was diagnosed uh, to have like this kind of uh, problem with the left side coordination of my body, and uh, the doctor said that I'd be clumsy for the rest of my life. And uh, uh, well, I was too ADHD at the time to even understand what that means, so I didn't care. But my mom cared. Our but she didn't, never told me this. Uh, but then, she put me to do all different kinds of sport when I was a kid. I was doing football, judo, all kinds of stuff, but nothing really uh, was, was the thing for me, because I could really quite fast notice that I'm not there where the other kids are. And then my brother started breaking, and I just started breaking back home, because I just saw what he was, how he was practicing. And then when I was eight, I was allowed to go to the classes too. And breaking was just so difficult that it was hard for everyone. So I didn't really feel uh, left out at all. And then uh, I started practicing and my crew uh, took me to practice with them. My brother <laughs> took me to practice with them. And, uh, and by the time I was 12, I was the Finnish champ of, of breaking uh, in the kids category. And that's when my mom told me that, haha, the doctor said you were going to be clumsy for the rest of your life. Haha. -ha. Look at you, champ. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> that was really cool. And uh, I thought it was rather funny also. Because I hadn't really even realized that until my mom told it to me. Then, that's just some uh, personal stuff. But then I think uh, also I have the, the thing that I've been growing up with, with my crew who I happen to be the youngest of, and the other guys are, well, Simpa is four years older than me, and he's the next youngest. Well, anyways, that I have grown up with, uh, with the people who are much older than me, and seen, seen every one of us grow up in, uh, in, uh, in, in different ways, because uh, we, yeah, the oldest guy is 10 years older than me, and uh, yeah, so I think that, it has helped me, uh, helped me a lot, because my crew always, when I was being uh, 12 to 15, I was a real brat, really annoying guy, like really. The teacher hated me and everybody probably hated me, but my crew, they stick with me and told me, that's not cool, this is, that's not what to do and everything. So I think later on, uh, that's the biggest lesson I think the, that I have got from hip hop, how to actually be a decent person and uh, that's what I got from my uh, crew and yeah. Well done champ. <laughs> applause, applause, applause. Editors note there's a crew members Lyrre as lying like a penguin in, on ice behind the camera. That's what we're looking for. Google's Lyrre as penguin. Ramona, what has been the biggest things that you have learned through hip hop? Well, the first things that comes into my mind is like this very like basic thing that we all need to struggle is the self confidence that you that you feel that you are somebody and you belong to somewhere. So I think in that point when I found uh, breaking, I was exactly in that br breaking point. <laughs> That uh, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> this is the breaking point. Normally, the people breaking break point. down. In <laughs> yeah, that uh, I was in that age that that um, 
I started like I started breaking when I was uh, 15 and I wanted to start before and I actually did start for for a little bit before but first of all I was the only girl girl and second of all I didn't have money so I didn't really like uh, I couldn't afford to go to any dance schools or anything like this so so I didn't have these these hobbies until I was old enough to go to work and that was like around when I was in 15 16 something like this and I was exactly in that point in my life that that uh, I felt like I didn't have any like any other thing than school and you go home and then then you have your friends but it wasn't enough I felt like I want to do something else otherwise I will just stuck with everything so then I found dancing and it gave me so much uh, that uh, I just started working really hard after the school I go to go to work and then during the weekends I went to Helsinki I took bus uh, train and I went to Helsinki to just see the b-boys and practice with them so that's how I started and that what it taught me was that nothing is impossible that if you just are like determined enough and if you don't if you don't think that you can make you can still make it that it's up to you that if you can trust yourself you can do anything you want in your life yes well nice thing that you asked me or sit <laughs> i'll answer myself uh i w one thing that i love hip-hop in, in hip-hop is that i have met so many peoples with different values different experiences and different uh, aspects of life but still that sometimes i feel like the only thing that connects me with some people is hip-hop and that is so strong bond that without the hip hop i would be like like not hating those people but still feeling that i'm in a different world with the people who i'm i'm hanging out with so hip hop is so strong bond that it goes over so many things that could be annoying or really disturbing on some levels that it, it keeps peace alive so I must ask uh, Elmo, you've been working in, in Sweden and in Finland with people who have fled from the countries that have war going on, like in Syria, Afghanistan and, and in Iraq. How has, how has the people you've been working with uh, taken hip-hop and dancing as an art form? Well, uh, Bobo has done a lot of similar work, I guess, too, but uh, for me, in my experience, it's been really positive. Uh, the, the people, we've had a, like a class and then usually I do, I have like a cipher in the end of the class where everyone gets to do their thing and, and, uh, and I was doing this kind of workshop in one refugee center in, near Gothenburg and uh, the, the kid, it was only eight, eight guys who were like 14 to 17 years old and they, they, we had a great class and uh, and the, then we had the cipher part, and we all had re they had really a lot of fun in that one. And then they wanted to do it so that they play their music and show me how to dance their dances and share that stuff. And it ended up lasting three hours this session. And uh, the 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 people who was in charge of the refugee center came to me and told that. It, this is really rare that this happens because the kids have been have such hard traumas that usually they have to stop classes quite fast and uh, have pauses and, and this kind of stuff. But then, I don't know, those three hours went by with magic and we had great fun and, and the, the guys even started to come to the practice spot in Gothenburg. So yeah, my experience is really, really positive. It, uh, it feels like they, if the vibe is, is right, then they can really get into a zone and just actually enjoy and express uh, themselves. Yeah. Do you have... So Bobo, you work with re refugees as well? Yeah, I worked in a Swedish uh, high school for uh, seven, eight months with uh, where my job, I was a youth worker in the high school uh, and my job was to help the kids 
to activate them because they were chaos. Like a lot of people, it was a lot of fights, a lot of uh, argue and stuff like that. And uh, like what I noticed during these uh, months was that these kids, like mostly the, the contact they had with the uh, grown-ups was mostly formal. Like uh, you come alone to a country, you meet one grown-up who's gonna help you get your papers. Then you meet one grown-up who's gonna help you during school. Then you meet one grown-up who's gonna help you with your traumas. Then you meet one grown-up, but you never really meet grown-ups who you can chill with. So this was my idea. Okay, I need to bring some grown-ups here who, who they can chill with. And because I do hip-hop, so it was mostly hip-hop grown-ups. <laughs> Uh, so we made like uh, three weeks of summer camp where uh, the youth could come and like try to paint graffiti, to learn how to make some beats, to rap, to break, uh, or just hang around. And uh, yeah, it was the same experience like Elmo said. Like uh, all of a sudden they were relaxed in a, in a different way. They were like, uh, they could talk to the grown-ups without having to ask them for some papers or like, it was like a sincere, sincere relationship. Even when it was just for three weeks, uh, it, was, uh, it was good for them to like, find different ways of expression and to share it with grown-ups who are more like friends than uh, grown-ups who are like, uh, there to help them officially, you know? Uh, and like, yeah, the same result. Today, I think we had like 70 or 80 kids, and I think 30 of them are active uh, in some, some expression, like uh, either dance or art or music. So yeah, I think definitely it's a good, good tool uh, for, the, for, 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 these, for the youth. For mostly for refugee youth, it's a great tool to, to use. So Ramona, you've been working with uh, Helsinki Human Rights and TUF with this call-out jump concept. What are your experiences with people from different cultures and, and, and sometimes harsh, harsh realities? Yeah, well, like I, I meet these kids every day since I teach in this association and exactly like our main intention is that we take these sports like uh, we have basketball and different kind of sports and then we have also dancing so we take this these activities to the places where there is most refugees and most problems in Helsinki and we go to schools and we teach after school uh, and what I've noticed the most is that exactly this um, let's say like the respect of the authorities almost doesn't exist with these kids, that that uh, they have such a different culture at home that in most of the homes there is no talking. It's only that the hand that tells you what to do. That that it's only all the rules you follow them, and if you don't follow, there is all, always uh, some kind of a punishment. But there is no such a thing that you talk. And um, with these kids, I I meet so that's maybe the biggest challenge for for all of us teachers that how we make them to understand that that because the kids that we have they know that we don't punish them that way in our activities but we try to talk with them that how we can um, affect them that how our authority can be can be uh, how could I say like how can we make them to listen to us when they know that we are not going to hit them, for example? Because they know that we are not going to do these kind of things and that's what they're used to. So that's make it be the biggest challenge for these kids that, that they follow the rules even though there is no such a thing as a physical punishment, but talk. And, and uh, that's what we try to do through our sports and all of these things that we try to teach them, these very, very basic things that most of us learned in very, very early age already. That, that if there is a problem, there is a grown-up that tells you why you shouldn't do this and why you shouldn't do that and why we do this and why we do that. So 
we start from very, very basic things that most of us takes, take it from granted, but it's not so, so like clear for, for these kids. And I see that uh, hip hop uh, and this dancing is very powerful tool for this because it, uh, it gives you the space that you can be very free. And even if you don't have the language to understand what I say, we still have the common body language to, to see what to do. And this, this thing can create a very strong bonding between these youth and kids. And through that way you have also the, the tool to start affecting to these very basic things. But, but uh, before that you need to have the trust. And uh, if I compare it with a regular youth worker and the, and the dance teacher or something like this, so, so when you have the tool such as dancing, for example, you have much more like, you can affect for such a like, powerful way to these kids than if you are a grown up that just tells them what to do because they're so used to that everybody tells them to what to do, this and that and that, but you have some common thing that you can share, like s something more. So I think that uh, uh, in this way, hip hop is very powerful tool for all of these kids to, to find the basic things for, their, for the rest of their life. Yeah. Yes. So we'll, we've all been through school system, like elementary school, preschool, uh, high school, well, some got dropped out from the high school, like me. And then uh, I have a uh, experience that some people are le left over from the, the group and the ways of learning and the, the learning tools because some people are more kinetic. They don't like to sit for 90 minutes and just uh, write and copy everything that the teacher writes or tells you. And I've had the uh, experience that I, I cannot sit and, and just listen. Please stand up and dance or do some. So, um, and after I, I left high school and I started to realize that there are such things as books that I could like to re read because they made me read, they made me do a lot of things through that just you need to do, period. There's no like reasoning behind that, just you need to do. Like we were talking that if, if we, you, you're talking Swedish right now, people will pick up their traumas back again, like whoop whoop. We, we had to learn Swedish in the school. So we have here Hip Hop Library. And I've been reading a lot. I didn't read that much when I was a kid. So how do you see Hip Hop as a learning tool to change things in, in schooling system? Because I, I have a feeling that we can help the school system to change the way they teach kids from our experiences. Do you, do you read me? Pun intended. Well, uh, I definitely agree with that, and I've been actually even talking about it with some uh, scientists from Helsinki that that there is some stuff that uh, we should update in our school system. And for example, uh, when when it comes to art and music classes, so why why there is always these old songs that everybody should learn? Why, for example? Uh, we can't take like rap and hip hop music, hip hop music produ producing all these elements into the classes because that's something that that uh, these kids they they deal with every day. They have YouTube. They go there and they listen to this kind of music already, more or less. Like of course the hip hop music also changed, but it's still there is the element, and and I think we should start from there that what do they want, what is their interest and we should go along with that instead of that we, what, what is our interest and then we just tell them to do this and that. Like for example, in my dance classes, so I, if it's like younger kids, so I use it a lot that I let them choose the music first. Because if that's some music that makes them the move, so I'm just happy as long as they dance, it's okay. It doesn't have to be like, if I don't think that it's a real hip-hop music, it doesn't matter. Because eventually it will come by the time. But when they're in certain age, you can't feed them with your knowledge unless they're ready to take it. 
So I think there is a lot of these kind of things we could uh, learn from from like all of all kind of subcultures, not only hip hop, but all kind of things. Brilliant, Elmo. Uh, well, I think that the the school system in in Scandinavia in general is is rather good. I think it must. It's like it it could be much worse, and some places in the world it is uh, much worse. But of course, I think that if if you're being told to what to do and what to read and uh, all the time this that it's not or it's I don't think it's gonna work for everyone. Uh, in hip hop, uh, like sharing is caring. Each one teach one. This kind of. Uh, I can I can tell Ramona what I think uh, could help her in her dance, and she can tell me. And it's it, there is no conflict between between the, between us, even though we're both dancers. Uh, but it's a mutual respect between us that allows us to uh, help each other. And understanding this is uh, I, I think it helped me a lot in my dance. But also maybe that could be like that the thing in the schools that. Maybe throw the ball to the uh, the kids to tell what kind of stuff they would like to do. But but yeah, like I said, uh, I think that in Scandinavia we still yeah, of course there's a lot to do. But but in in a, compared to other countries, it, it, it could be worse. There is uh, one teacher in high school, math teacher, that leaves the kids alone to teach, like each one teach one. Uh, logical point of view, like you give them a task and there's always like teachers who take the people like okay Ramona let's do this and then Ramona would be like okay I know more about this so what do you think about this though so they they just leave the group alone and they they reason the task and the problems together so the teacher just goes away and, and lets, the, lets the people do to discuss and take their time how they can solve the problem this is one thing that is is common thing in hip hop, I guess. That people have a mission and then they just accomplish it what, through uh, group work. That's a really nice thing. I, I'm pretty sure that that will get more common in, in, in school system in Scandinavia and in the world too. To build the self motivation in the people. So, how do you see uh, hip hop as an educator? Yeah. How it could affect the schooling system? Mm, just like you said, like uh, I think. Hip hop is a lot about uh, like uh, you have the state of mind for solutions and not so much for problems. Like you, like I had a big problem with windmill. I don't know if you know this move, but it's like yeah, it took me six months to learn one dance move, <laughs> and uh, it was a problem. But the solution was the people around me, my crew, uh, DVDs, uh, searching for knowledge and. Oh, a bunch of stuff. And during this period of six months, I learned so much more than just the women. For instance, I learned how to, yeah, to solve a problem. Uh, so I think this is a good way. And like Ramona said, not only within hip hop, but a lot of subcultures have different methods uh, around solving a problem, which I personally believe this is what we should learn in schools. Like, okay, in life, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some personal problems, you're going to have some collective problems. How do you solve them? Because that's basically what we do. Like We solve problems in, in life to, to make it better. And uh, I think this is a good, good way how hip-hop can show the schools a different point of view, like a diff different type of thinking. So I, I think hip-hop more can help the educators, actually, than the, the children in school. Okay, it can help children to... For instance, what you said about uh, uh, the, the, yeah, self-confidence is a good good thing. Uh, but most of all, I think it's gonna be better for the educators. Like for instance, because we have methods within hip hop that we use. That uh, like we started now. Uh, to try to make like some methods from hip hop, for instance, uh, digging, sampling, mixing, and looping. Those four, like you can apply it to whatever in life. Like, okay, you need to dig for knowledge, 
you need to sample the knowledge, whatever you think was good. Like for instance, you have 10 people in the room. At least, all of them are gonna have at least one thing that you like about them that you don't have, that you can learn from them. So you sample from 10 of them, and then you mix it, and then you loop the procedure. Like again, okay, I go dig, sample, loop. Uh, dig, sample, mix, dig, sample, mix. And in the end, it's getting better and better. So like th these type of things, I think, is dope from hip hop point of view to for the educators. You have something? Yeah, I just yep. want to add that uh, one one ma very main thing that the, like the whole hip hop culture represent already like from the way like when it started was that that uh, everybody wanted to be different. They like and that's some basic even feeling that all of us feel that everybody want to belong to somebody so, some somewhere. Uh, everybody want to belong to somewhere but still be different. We want to be same but different. And that's that's something we value and appreciate a lot in hip-hop culture that be yourself, be something that you are, and that's cool. That's, yeah, that's originality. the originality. The originality, exactly. And that's something uh, I think in many, not only the school system, but many other systems in, in our whole like world, it's something we could learn from that, that um, our schooling is is focused on one type of a learning, learn, way of learning that that if you are not learning from reading from the books so maybe there is some other way that you are not less talented than somebody else but you have just a different way of learning and that's something that we could learn from hip hop that that everybody are individuals and everybody should be individuals because that's the beauty of it and yes. that we should encourage the kids and the youth and the adults all of them to exactly to find their own like strong parts and that's some that's something that is very strong in in the whole hip hop culture yes uh, everybody knows that when there's fun you learn and, and, and remember more about the things we learn in life and there have been studies that the most efficient way to learn something is to teach it when you you like say okay one plus one is three I say is it it's three, okay. Did you know that one plus one is three? She didn't know. Now I remember that one plus one is three. So we, in, in hip hop, we teach people like immediately when we have some fun things to, to show people, like windmills or whatever. I guess that is something that is, is really like, we don't even understand it, that we're doing it naturally. And that is something that science is proving time at a time, that when you have fun, you can remember things, and, and when you teach people, you are doing the things that are most efficient way to build up, up routines of, of how you learn and how you teach other people. So it's it's a pretty amazing loop of a school to be in, in, in hip hop communities. So the thing thing that we've been doing here in, in Jyväskylä, Finland, right around here in Veturidalit youth, youth houses, that we've been piloting hip hop school. Uh, Elmo is going to be teaching some break dancing next year in few months, and, and uh, we are building more, more and more this type of thing. That there are pioneers in this field of hip hop in US that can teach people and kids who can teach their friends and to do these type of things. Uh, Bobo, what are you experiencing in making hip hop as a school? Quote unquote. Yeah, uh, we have actually in Sweden we have some. Like uh, in Malmö, in my city where I live, we have a Folkhögskola, it's the same, same as here. And it's uh, hip-hop education, where you can learn to... Uh, they have two different... Uh, what do you say? Two different uh, courses. One is for uh, like uh, artists with uh, graffiti or uh, painting or stuff like that, or sculpt making sculptures. And the other one evolves around music. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is really hip hop in a form of school. I think it's really nice. Uh, but then on the other hand, I really don't like schools. <laughs> I gotta share this one as well, because I was like you. Like I had really tough, tough time in school. But what I think hip hop can do school-wise is to, to change 
Like if you go to a hip hop school, it's more free because, like you said, it's all about uh, doing yourself, like being yourself. And if it's possible to make hip hop schools where you can have a common, common goal, but that you can have help to reach that goal by yourself in in different ways, then I think it would be really nice. Uh, so, yeah, I have, I'm having kind of mixed feelings actually now. Because uh, <laughs> uh, it, it depends also, like, for instance, uh, schools in Sweden are very different from schools here. Uh, schools in Sweden are really in the box, like, you really don't have, uh, you're not allowed to go outside of the box at all. Uh, so if, uh, and this is the, the biggest problem with the hip-hop schools we have in Sweden that they are way inside, like, too, uh, too square, they are, they are too square. So, uh, if, we, if we would make a hip-hop school in Sweden that is like a course for a high school, like a official high school, like a state, state school, I think uh, it wouldn't be possible to make it hip-hop, because hip-hop is, is so much bigger than the school system. Like the learning process of hip hop is so so unorthodox. It's it's so basic for human, uh, but it's so not basic for school. <laughs> like uh, it's abstract uh, so, a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I'm kind of if 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 there is countries where you can be free and do like do the hip hop school freely to be just like hip hop culture is, uh, then thumbs up. But if it's a hip hop school that is uh, in the Swedish school system. Thumbs down. <laughs> yes. I must thank you, thank, uh, thank, thank the Veturitalli Youth House because we are, we are in a place where people can come as they are and, and learn. Basically, they, this is what we mean uh, as a hip hop school. That you come in a place where hip hop happens and you can come or you can go and you can bring your friends and, and you just learn. And, and I think the diamond in this is that we're sharpening is that people come here and, and ask and, and push us for, forwards to, to teach the things that they want to learn. That is the thing. This is really, this is privilege. This is something that, that I think we take granted sometimes that we have a place like this and this is not something that you see that often in the world. Now, Elmo, uh, how are you seeing this hip hop in school or as a, as a learning well, tool? Uh, I think that, that the best way for the hip hop school idea uh, to work is is that people who go to this school uh, are all there with the shared motivation for it and they are the driving force to teach each other not that it's like we and Ossi have a school and then we get these kids and tell them what to, what to learn no, no, but definitely using this stuff that we do like in breaking with crews in, in rapping with your crew uh, that uh, if that is possible uh, then i think it can be really great and it can be a really cool thing oh, of course i don't know if uh, we can make it into a course that that the finnish school system would say that oh now you have become a hip hopist or whatever they want to call you after that but uh, i think the care is one of hip hop <laughs> Yeah, but I think that uh, it's definitely a great, great idea, and and like like Ossi said, now that we have this, the library, some workshops in, with different elements, I think we have things pretty good. It's great. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Ramona. Uh, well, I think, like overall, like for example, that just if we, in general, if we think about like life, you can't live, you can't learn life in schools. You can, you can learn about some things in our society, in our, in our life, by going to school. And but you can't learn the life in school. You need to learn it by living. And I think it's the same way with the hip hop culture that you can get some frames and some tools to understand what it is. But it's a big responsibility for the teachers to give the understanding that that after you get what you have you need to go and search for more because that's not the whole truth 
that's just some tools to get there and get some kind of a beginning for that and then go and live it because the culture happens where the culture is and the, this subculture is on the streets. It's a subculture. You can't learn it in the school. So in that way, I think that it will never fit totally in the schools, but there can be some educational programs that will reach those people that otherwise wouldn't reach hip-hop culture and give the understanding also for those people that don't live in the hip-hop culture but live in the schools like other kind of a teachers and other kind of a scientists, whatever, that it's definitely a good thing that if it goes to some like educational systems and the schools, but that's that it, it's uh, only a little part of the whole picture. So I, as like Bobo, I also have a little bit like, I think like it's a good thing, but then I, then again, I can't say that if there would be a whole school of only hip hop, that how, like, how would I make it in, in reality? How would I make it happen? So that's a good question. I don't know. It, I don't think it would work the same way than the regular, like, our cliché picture of a school. I think it would be a lot different. So. House of people having fun. Yeah. <laughs> fun house. So we, we were so close to have a Finnish rapper producer, uh, Havo, aka Misha here. He couldn't make it and uh, he was in uh, uh, University of Minneapolis for five, five to six months learning hip-hop. And, and they, they had uh, tasks like write 100 lines of battle rap t for tomorrow and, and he could rap in, in Finnish. So he was crafting his, his writing skills and rapping in, in high, uh, university. And that is something that, that we look forward to, to hear more in the future. Maybe we get him in the next episode. So hip-hop school, we never know what type of school it is. We're having one type of school here. School is where your heart is and what you want to learn, you will learn. You will find ways. Uh, do you have any last famous words or any wisdom to share to the public here and the people who are watching watching in YouTube or whatever? Uh, yeah, it's December. It's good to behave good. The elves are watching. <laughs> Those were the elves. <laughs> These are the breaks. Break it up, break it up, break it up. Bop, bop, bop. Spirit world. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. Don't forget to have fun. And make more jams and visit more jams. The jams? Yes, Bobo. Wise words. <laughs> Ramona. Uh, well, uh, I think like one way or another, if you're interested in hip hop or whatever you're interested in, just don't stop. Continue. Always continue. Never stop. Even if it would change its forms, how you will continue, but never stop. Yes. I'd like to say that uh, the future is now and believe in crazy stuff because it, it happens if you make it happen. And we've been doing crazy stuff with these people and all the people here. So, hip hop hooray! Yes, thank you everybody. Make it happen, man. <laughs>